Welcome to another ultralight airplane design video from the ultralight airplane workshop. In this video we're going to start a new mini series on the nose rib design for the UWS-4 ultralight airplane. I'm going to try to remember on the first part of the little mini series to talk about why we're doing this. Now this nose rib design is for an ultralight airplane that meets the federal aviation regulations in the United States of part 103 and part 103 covers ultralight airplanes. So if your airplane falls within the design limitations of part 103, it's an ultralight airplane. And if it's an ultralight airplane, you don't have a license to fly it and the airplane does not have to be certified. But just because it doesn't have to be certified doesn't mean we should try to do a really quality job of designing the airplane. So that's what we're trying to do here. Now we've already done one mini series on a cantilever design for the nose rib. And I did that series because I was basically wanted to figure out how light a rib I could make that would still work. And I thought that was a fairly successful design. And I'll put a link to that series up here in the upper right hand corner. But as I said at the end of that series, I want to compare the cantilever design to potential truss design. And that's what we are looking at here. Now the cantilever design had this same outside shape, but on the inside, it came to about this depth, came around like this. I'm not drawing a very straight line here. And then in, out at about here, it had a three inch radius curve that came out to here. And then also on the top, it had a three inch radius curve. So it looked like that. So in this area, there's quite a bit of aluminum. And in this area, there's quite a bit of aluminum. What I was hoping to do with the truss design was be able to make it a little bit lighter. Now, I don't think I probably succeeded in that, but I think it should be far, far stronger, which is a good thing. Now, in the loads that I calculated for that nose, I had to have about a 75 pound load when we were at 3.8 Gs. Man, I cannot draw very well here. Now, I made those calculations based on the design of the Unibus 4 before it went to Oshkosh 2023. While I was at Oshkosh, I did a lot of work when I was in my travel trailer at night on the design for the Unibus 4. I was writing a design document and working on some design issues. And at that time, I decided to want to carry a heavier pilot. I won't be able to handle pilots that included up to the 95 percentile. And that is at 257 pounds. Well, that made my gross weight increase from 517 pounds to 580 pounds. Now that increased the load on the nose and now we're at 86 pounds at 3.8 G's. So that's increasing the load. That cantilever design that I had before would have to be modified to be a little bit stronger in order to carry this load, I'm pretty sure, because it just barely carried the 75 pound load. But I should say it was tested up to uh, the safety factor 1.5, so it was really carrying 112 pounds during the test. So regardless, I was going to have to design a new rib anyway. And this truss style, I think, can carry a lot more weight. So this is actually the second iteration of design, and it may go through a third iteration, but I want to go ahead and get this video made so you can see an idea of what I'm thinking about. Now, on this interior, we got a truss beam here, and we have a truss beam here. And in addition, I'm making this nose triangular shaped. So you can see there's triangular shapes here in these three regions. So it should make this fairly strong. Now there is a little bit of an issue. I'm going to make the flanges different than I did on the cantilever style. On the cantilever style, I would have a flat area, which like this area up here, and then a flange that would come down at 45 degrees, and then the outside flange that would attach the wing skin would be something like this. So this is a profile view. And all of the surfaces on the interior were curved. Now you notice here I have straight lines. Here, 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 and here. These are all straight lines. So I don't have to actually have to go at a 45 degree angle on these. So I can actually make a profile that looks like this in those areas. So I can make a flat area, which is this area here, and then the inside flange can be 90 degrees and the outside flange can be 90 degrees. So that's much stronger than the 45 degree flange. 
but I can't do that in here on these curves. Now I could have made these curves much broader coming out this way and putting a flange at least in those curved areas, but that adds a whole lot more surface area and it's going to end up making it heavy. So what I'm going to try instead, now this is a one inch radius here. In fact, let me uh, change drawings real quick. What we're looking at here is a template that will be used to cut out the aluminum that will be bent over the form that we were just looking at. So let me talk about what I was just getting ready to talk about before. So right here is basically the bend line on the form we were looking at. So you can see this is the area that we bent down at 90 degrees. Now up here, this also we bent down at 90 degrees. And what I'll do is I'll be putting crimps in here in order to take care of handling the excess material that has to be not removed but gotten out of the way so that we can bend down at a 90 degree angle but still have this face here be flat. And by the way, just as description, these holes here are where the rivet holes will be. There'll be two inch spacing on the top of the wing and three inch spacing on the bottom of the wing. This hole here is an indexing hole here and here. And what we were just looking at, you can see that the index holes here, here and here. So they'll match up. That'll let the template come in the correct spot over this form that we'll bend it over. This curve here almost matches the curve back on the form. It's just that I made this a little, just slightly smaller, something like uh, 80 thousandths of an inch, a little bit smaller. So it's extending past the edge of the form a little bit. So it'll bend over just a smidgen, which will help give it just a little bit of stiffness, but not much. So this area in here and here and here and here are potentially weak spots in this design just because I don't have a nice flange in this circular curved area here and so it's going to be more likely to flex when it's under load and speaking of loads let's take a real quick look at how I did those calculations so I've made a handy dandy little spreadsheet here that helps me calculate the loads that are going to be on the ribs actually loads anywhere along the wing cord wise and span wise but in particular I want to be able to calculate the loads on the rivets that are connecting the skin to the ribs so I'm really not going to go into the details on this I'm just going to come down to the results area now I've done this calculation for the rivets on the top of the ribs and the bottom of the ribs so this area right in here is top of the ribs this is the nose area up in here, actually, I've also got some main area, main rib area, but right now we're just concentrating nose rib. So right in here is where the spar cap is, or the spar, and then I've got rivets going forward, and up here is the leading edge. So rivet one is the first rivet in front of the spar, and then another rivet, and then so on. I got 11 rivets on top of this rib, and this load is being calculated at the root of the wing, where we have the greatest load. So essentially what I've done is I've come all the way over here and I have here calculated what the load is going to be on each rivet. And I want to keep this load, I'd like to keep it under 10 pounds. You can see we've got three of these that are just barely over 10 pounds. I think that's good enough. I'm trying to keep from deforming the rivet hole when a large load is being put on it. And by the way, these calculations again are 3.8 G's with the 580 pound gross load. I also have a calculation out here for the rib out here at the midpoint on the aileron, but we'll ignore that. And then I also did the same calculation for the rivets on the bottom side. So let me come back here. Now the spacing on these ribs are spacing along the curve. Now as the curve gets steeper, steeper towards the nose, the X direction or the chord direction gets more narrow, even though the spacing is two inches between rivets. In the X direction, it's going to be less. So for example, right here, this column has the X position of the rivets. In other words, the position along the cord. So the first rivet is at about half an inch and then, then the spacing to the next rivet is a little over an inch. Spacing to the rivet after this one is one and a half. Spacing to the rivet after this one is 1.7. And then as we proceed on, it gets closer to two inches until we get back to the spar and then I got a little short distance there from the last rivet on the rib to the rivet on the spar cap. And then here on the bottom I had three inch spacing 
So again, we start at pretty close to half an inch. Now you notice there are fewer rivets on the bottom of the rib. We only have seven rivets there. That's because it's just a much wider spacing. And again, we come over to load. Now all these are less than 10 over here. And by the way, I should mention, the load on the bottom side is when we're flying inverted and we only have one and a half Gs there. So we don't have to have nearly as much load. That lets me put more space here between the rivets. So the maximum load there is uh, almost nine pounds. I should mention that I'm also not doing stress calculations on this beam or this beam. I'm basically doing that for not a good reason, but because I didn't do it for the cantilever. I eyeballed the cantilever design and actually came pretty close to a good design on that one. So I'm going to, just for grins, do the same thing on this one. So I'm just eyeballing this design and we're going to see what happens. Now, if it does fail, I'll go ahead and do calculations, particularly the compression on this one when we are flying upside down and the compression on this one when we're flying right side up. And then I'll make modifications as needed. And of course, if this fails for some reason with the, uh, all, actually I should do it the other way, if it fails going this direction, when I'm doing my big tests, or if this fails, let's see, if it fails, it'll probably fail in the upside down direction. So that would be that way. Those will probably be just a little bit harder to calculate. So I might eyeball them. And if I do make a change, it'll be, well, there's two possibilities. One is to make the flange right here that's bent down a little bit longer. Or the other way is to make this face just a little bit wider out here. Of course, that'll make it heavier. I'd rather not do that. Anyway. We're just gonna go into this one blind and see what happens. And then this is what I'm gonna to use to make my forms. This is a PDF file. This is architectural D size. So it's 24 inches tall, 36 inches wide. This is the form that I'll use to bend the aluminum over. This is the template that I'll cut out to cut the aluminum to the correct form. And then again, the registration holes here. So a pen will go through that to make sure that the aluminum when it's cut out will be over the form in the correct spot. Now, how I'm going to form the aluminum, I'm not sure. I would like to do hydroforming. I don't know if I will, but I, I'm exploring doing that right now. But that's all I've got for this video. I want to kind of give an introduction to what I'm thinking about for the design of the rib, this truss style rib. We'll do testing very similar that we did the cantilever. We'll just add a whole bunch of weight along the rivet areas along here. And I think I'm gonna test it upside down. If it survives the high load test, I'll turn it upside down and do a low load test also. And then I'll weigh it and we'll compare it to the cantilever rib. Well guys, that's all I've got. Thanks for watching. Until next time.